Do you make money testing bikes on YouTube? And do brands pay for these reviews? How do you get so many bikes to test? And do you keep these bikes? These are a few questions I get, and I hope to answer those in this video. And no, brands do not pay for reviews, and no, I do not keep the bikes. If you came here looking for a video on how to make a million dollars quickly on YouTube, <laughs> This is not that video. But instead, I want to talk about how I make money, how bike magazines work, how bike websites work, because that is my background and that is what led me to YouTube. I'll talk about testing bikes and gear and I'll talk about my biases. When it comes to bike and gear reviews, many savvy cycling fans have questioned how various business models affect the integrity of the reviews. It's a valid question and one that I hope to answer in regards to myself with this video. First, some background. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Ben Delaney and I've worked in cycling media since the year 2000. I worked at a trade magazine that took me inside factories in Asia and gave me an education on the manufacturing and the business of bikes. I worked at cycling magazines that took me to the Tour de France and other races around the globe. And I worked at bike websites where teams of editors tested both product and covered bike races. Bike magazines have or had two sources of revenue, subscriptions and advertising. In the glory days of bike magazines, it was pretty simple. If a brand wanted to reach the target audience, they needed to buy ads. And if a bike fan wanted to learn about what was happening out there, they needed to pay for a subscription. Turns out the internet changed all of that. The web exploded the reach of many cycling media brands, but ironically hurt the business. As for years, the content online was completely free taking that subscription revenue out of the equation and the cost of advertising was substantially lower than that of print magazines. So in recent years, many magazines have gone out of business and many websites have put up a paywall of one type or another. Many websites, YouTube channels, and even individuals on social media have also gone the route of affiliate sales where they get a portion of the sales when you click through on a link. So how do I make money on YouTube? Well, a few ways. One the YouTube ads that you see at the start and the middle. YouTube makes most of the money, but I get a portion of that and I don't have any interaction as to the buying and the selling. That's just, just a feature that is bolted into YouTube. And frankly, one of the reasons I chose to go into YouTube as an individual. While that is regular revenue, that is not enough revenue to make a full-time job unless I take my daughter's advice and start doing videos on cute dogs and cats. Another way I make money is through annual sponsors with products that are peripheral to bikes. In 2023, that was Castelli Clothing, Feedback Sports Stands and Tools, and Giro Helmets. I'm happy to say those three are continuing on into 2024, and I'm also adding sponsors in nutrition, maintenance, and sunglasses and shoes. Just like this year, I will not do tests or reviews in those categories because that will be a bunch of baloney. And as always in every video description, I list my sponsors like most credible YouTube channels should. I do not have bike sponsors. I do not have tire sponsors as this would defeat the purpose of what I'm trying to do here, which is to give you my honest take on products in those categories. Another way I make money is through occasional video specific sponsors such as Perk Coffee a cycling friendly business. I've dabbled a bit with the affiliate sales model, not for bikes, but for some tires and some smaller pieces. That's added up to maybe a few hundred dollars over the course of the year. Some businesses start with affiliate links as looking at what are the categories and products where you could make the most money and then review the products based on that. I think that's a backwards way to go about it if the object is to try to find out what the coolest stuff is and give you honest feedback there. And then lastly, I work with races to do course preview videos. Let me tell you what I don't do, and that is to sell reviews. I realize some others might do that, but for me, that would just break the whole model of what I'm trying to do here. What I want to do is build an audience by being a reliable source of information. 
Many of you have asked how you can support the ride. There's a few ways. First of all, I appreciate you asking. Uh, one way is through Super Thanks, a feature that is built into YouTube. Sometimes people will kick me five or 10 bucks uh, here in YouTube. I appreciate that. I also sold a batch of hats earlier this year and will do so again in 2024. I'm looking at some designs for some gravel tech tees and some water bottles and maybe even some jerseys. So that could be a way to support the ride. But primarily, you can support me just by watching these videos, subscribing, making sure you've got the notifications turned on so whenever I do a new video, that pops up to your attention. And if you like a video, just share it on social with your friends. How do I test bikes? Well, I've worked with cycling engineers, I've worked with professional mechanics, and I've worked with professional riders. I'm none of these myself. I test bikes as a longtime bike rider and as a professional journalist. Testing bike is a funny thing. There's no one perfect way to do it. I've taken bikes and gear and wheels and tires into various wind tunnels and labs, looking to tease out the, some hard data differences between models. That's a fun but uh, complicated and expensive can of worms. Group tests are also a great way to test stuff of getting as many products together as you can uh, in a relative category and looking for similarities and differences. Can't always pull that off on a regular basis. And then long-term testing similarly is a great thing to do, but just isn't feasible, especially with new products coming out. You can't have you know, breaking news on a product and have a year of testing in the bag at the same time. So how do I test? Basically, I try to ride as many interesting bikes as I can, as often as I can, in as many different situations and contexts as I can, and then share that information with you in a comparative fashion. How do I get so many bikes to test? Well, in a word, relationships. A gamble I took when I started this channel was the hope that relationships I had built over the years working at different websites and magazines would carry forward so that when I called someone or texted them or emailed and said, hey, could I borrow a bike to test it? They would respond <laughs> in a positive way. And for the most part, that has uh, proven to be the case for which I am grateful. Now that I've established the ride somewhat in its fledgling year, brands will request that I test bikes. Sometimes it's the people inside the company themselves. Sometimes it's people in an outside PR firm. And then sometimes it's me reaching out to the company uh, saying, hey, could I please borrow this bike for a few months? Basically, it's the same procedure that is employed at magazines and websites. As for magazines and websites, the brands will foot the cost of shipping a bike to me and then sending it back. You could argue that, oh, that's a way you're effectively getting money. I'm not getting cash. Bike magazines and bike websites aren't getting cash, but they are not outlaying cash at the same time for these. Similarly, at launches, sometimes bike brands will f invite editors, and fly them in and put them up to experience a new product for a day or more. You could argue that this amounts to taking money or at least benefiting from a brand spending money, or it could invite the implication that there is some bias involved. Sure, in a perfect world, a tester, whether that was me or someone at a website or a magazine, would purchase each of these products at retail and have the exact consumer experience that a consumer does. A couple reasons why that doesn't happen. The biggest is money. Uh, magazines and websites are, don't have the cash to go out and buy these bikes, and I certainly do not. And two, the timeliness of launching bikes. Often brands will you know, invite you to test a bike ahead of what is called an embargo, which is when they release the information out. And web websites, magazines, and people like myself are eager to have our content lined up you know, right when the embargo lifts uh, so that you can find our content about it. I'll give you an example of how this model can sometimes break down. Recently, Canyon launched its new Grail gravel bike and testers like myself received bikes with a few things. A computer mount that's needed for this uh, unique cockpit and the bag, magnetic bag that snaps on and off. I and others 
assume that these pieces would be available just when the bike was available. That was certainly not the case. And had we purchased these things at retail, we would have been aware of that. But since we got it direct from the company, we were not. So that to say, it's not a perfect system, but it's the one I'm working within. And like editors at other places, I do try my best to get all the information uh, as best I can and update it uh, when I drop the ball or get something wrong or overlook something. It's a little tricky in videos. That's something I miss <laughs> in working from websites is being able to go in and uh, update something after the fact. But I'll, you know, when I do need to add or correct something in a video, I'll put that in the comments and then pin it to the top. Again, ain't perfect, but that's the, the system that I'm working in here. As far as what bikes I test, I request things that are interesting to me and ones that I believe will be most interesting to you. I keep them for a few months, do a video on them, and ask for a call tag from the company and then ship them back. I own two bikes, a Tarmac SL4 from when I worked at Specialized for a hot minute, and then an Envy road bike which was custom made for me when I worked at Vela News. And uh, once I got laid off from outside, I requested, hey, can you guys give me a deal on this bike? So I've got those two bikes. I do not own a gravel bike. I've been testing so many gravel bikes that I haven't had time <laughs> to ride a bike of my own. I've tested at least 63 gravel bikes at this point, and I don't know how many road bikes. Bottom line is that the context of all these different machines and experiences is what I'm trying to share here on the ride. Let's talk bias. Everybody's got some of that, right? Big picture, I'm one of these fools who honestly believe that if everyone rode a bike in the world, the world would be a better place in terms of the physicality, the endorphins you get from it, the benefits to physical health and mental health and environmental air quality. Also, it's harder for us to be jerks to each other when we're outside of our cars and closer to face to face. So yes, I am pro bike for sure. And the smaller picture, where you live and how you like to ride affects the definition of what good is, right? For me, I love riding and racing gravel bikes and road bikes, riding solo, riding in groups. I love having an event on the calendar because it just gives so much structure to the riding, something to look forward to. And then once you're at the thing, I really appreciate the energy and momentum of riding in a pack. Bike packing, on the other hand, is something that really holds no interest to me, unless we're talking like credit card bike packing, you know, point to point, staying in a place, sleeping on a bed. So that's just my orientation as far as what I think cool is and what I think good is for bikes. I'm interested in performance of gear, whether that's aerodynamics or weight or rolling resistance, while being aware that the biggest factor by far in the whole equation is you, the rider. And I'm 100% keen on functionality. I love things like tubeless for keeping the party rolling or wax for keeping the chain clean. In summary, I'm doing the ride because I love cycling and I love storytelling. And I'm doing the ride as a business. And that business hinges on credibility. If I'm providing good reviews with honest feedback and some contextual analysis, then I'm on the right track. I might not always be correct <laughs> in what I'm saying, but I will always be honest in my feedback about the bikes and gear that I'm testing. So this obviously was a different kind of video, but I hope it gives you some insight as to how I operate the ride and perhaps gives you some food for thought. As always, I'm interested to read your comments and you know I'm here to remind you to do one thing, because we are not here forever. You best enjoy the ride.